be loved and protected. Thus, they have each clearly instructed their followers that the vegetarian diet, one that is animal free, is the only one that is suitable for humankind as God has decreed from the beginning of time. In this program, Our Noble Lineage, we will examine the origins of religious groups, spiritual organizations and communities that exist in the world today. A warm greeting, brave-hearted viewers, to our noble lineage. Thank you for joining us as we journey back to the 19th century to explore the teachings and philosophy and the advocacy of a pure vegetarian diet by a spiritual group that is still in existence today, the Unity School of Christianity. In the late 19th century, the co-founder of the Unity School of Christianity, Charles Fillmore, wrote the following wise comment. There is a relationship between thinking and eating and as you grow spiritually, the character of your food and all that pertains to eating may have to be changed. Charles and his wife Myrtle were sincere truth seekers who lived in Missouri, USA. They found great power and positive influence through affirmative prayer and Charles studied metaphysical science as well as many religions from around the world. As they spoke to their family and friends about the truths they had discovered, a strong spiritual group began to form around them. They printed magazines which shared the information that they had learned and actively promoted the vegetarian lifestyle that they followed. The Fillmores also established a vegetarian restaurant which became famous for the huge number of people that it served every day. They also started a vegetarian food company as well as a farm that was renowned for its wonderful orchard and fresh produce. They admired and accepted many different faiths from around the world and called their organization Unity, hoping to form common bonds between the different religions. Unity taught that everyone should strive to evolve and improve themselves by means of a noble lifestyle and the vegetarian diet, and also mentally and spiritually progress through inner practice, including affirmative prayer and a positive approach to life. They taught that all beings originate from God, that goodness is our true nature, and that the evolution back towards this God consciousness is the solution to all of man's problems. Myrtle Fillmore was the one who originally set the Unity Group into motion. She had been a Christian since she was young. However, in spite of her prayers, she had been plagued with sickness throughout her life and she was told that she had inherited this tendency. In 1886, after Myrtle had married Charles, she became very ill. During this time, she attended a class taught by a noted metaphysician, Dr. Eugene B. Weeks, who spoke about the power of the God which is within every person and that could heal all illness. In his lecture, Dr. Weeks made a statement that would change Myrtle's understanding of herself and set her on a new course of spiritual development. He said, I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. Myrtle prayed frequently to the divine power, repeating this phrase many times, and within two years she was healed of her lifelong illness. Her family and friends were very excited and encouraged by this, and they began praying in the same positive manner. Charles was initially skeptical, but when Myrtle was healed of all her sicknesses, he was convinced and he began to study the links between religion and science, as well as vegetarianism. Supreme Master Television traveled to Missouri, USA to speak with Phil Pearson, a longtime pastor and vice president of the Unity School of Christianity, about Charles Fillmore's teachings and his views on vegetarianism. that it was advantageous to the spiritual life to have a ve vegetarian diet. Can you share some of those writings? Well, I just happened to write a couple of right along here Thank with you. me. But uh, he was very committed to a vegetarian diet. Uh, this is a writing from one of his books, Adam's Smashing Power of Mind. And he says, there is a relation between thinking and eating. And as you grow spiritually, the character of your food and all that pertains to eating 
may have to be changed in conformity with the new order of things. Meaning, you have to change, his commitment was to change your, your food habits, eating habits, to conform with your efforts to think more spiritually and in tune with your God self that is within you. And as we know from his other writings, uh, and this is more specific to vegetarianism from the revealing word, he said, vegetarianism is one of the ways to real health because it requires in a measure the keeping of the spiritual law. And part of that, I think, would be his commitment to the power of love. And uh, as I think you know in other writings, he said that it was incompatible to him to have to kill animals mm -hmm. to eat, which was a violation of the basic law of love in his perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the only path to spirituality is uh, to uh, discipline your diet to vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. He talked about also like uh, in the Bible how it says don't cause your brother to fall and that's another reason to be vegetarian I noted like he said because um, even if you're not the one doing the slaughtering like it's causing someone else to have to do that violence. Mm -hmm. He also wrote I found it interesting he made a connection between the vegetarian diet and like sanity of mind in the sense that uh, he said uh, there's like you don't see a vegetarian who is also an alcoholic. He made a connection between being vegetarian and not having being prone to the vice of alcohol. Can you say anything about that? Well, I, I think he related definitely to the capacity that we have for discipline, because you cannot make spiritual advancement in life without a developed discipline in your life, mm -hmm. because. Uh, the primary focus of the unity teaching is on disciplining your thoughts to think according to God's nature yes. rather than what the world teaches us. And then that carries over into things like uh, controlling your drinking and your eating habits which get in the way. I mean, we know what drinking does to so our capacity to think positive, loving, kind thoughts. We, right. we tend to lose track of those sometimes when we've been drinking. Right. So I'm sure that he was thinking that all of those are related to this necessity for discipline in your life. Charles Fillmore studied many different religions from around the world, noting their numerous similarities and focused on taking the best and most noble views from each. They chose the word unity to describe their organization, saying, we have borrowed the best from all religions. That's the reason we are called unity. Unity is not a sect, not a separation of people into an exclusive group of know-it-alls. Unity is the truth that is taught in all religions, simplified so that anyone can understand and apply it. Students of unity do not find it necessary to sever their church affiliations. Thus, people from all faiths and backgrounds around the United States came to Charles and Myrtle for advice and support taking what they had gained back to their own family and religious groups for discussion. Now, as I understand it, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore never intended to found a church, but it developed, and it still has this sense of openness, and that uh, people are welcome to come. It's not that they have to be, change their denomination. They can continue going to the church they went to before mm -hmm. and have unity as part of their life. Can you speak to a little bit about Yeah, that? I think that's a very important part of, of Unity's outreach, that uh, the Fillmore's felt that the message that they understood of Jesus' teaching uh, could not be limited by insistence on any dogma or doctrine mm -hmm. where it says to be a, a such and such you have to believe this and do this. Right. They only wanted to reach people with the message that they felt had helped transform and change their lives. Right. Thank you, gentle viewers, for your kind-hearted presence on our noble lineage. Please tune in again next week for the continuation of The Unity School of Christianity and Spiritual Vegetarianism. And now, please stay tuned for a gift of love, simple and nutritious cooking with Supreme Master Ching Hai. May your spirit glow wondrously in harmony with the glorious music of heaven. <laughs>